Meantime, the federal debt load snowballing in recent months, adding about a trillion dollars every hundred days and currently sitting near 34 and a half trillion in total. The surge raising concerns about higher rates and lower growth in the long run, which her next guest says could make capital more sparse, cut into the number of U.S. debt buyers. Joao Gomez is a professor of finance at the Wharton School. Joao, great to have you with us. Um, I, I think that a lot of people are worried about the national debt, worried about how we fund uh, everything. But at the same time, it's just something it, it there, what is what is going to push this to the forefront to actually be an impact on the markets? Hi, Melissa. Thank you for having me. Um, I think some people are worried, but not enough. Apparently, certainly not in Washington. Um, I think one thing that could push this to the forefront is we will have a big debate next year about whether to extend the Trump tax cuts or not. I think that's a first order concern. I think that's going to cost a significant amount of money. And we're going to have that debate in the context of a very divisive presidency, uh, whoever wins. And so a certain amount of skepticism about the, the quality of the fiscal policy uh, that we're going to put in place. So that could bring that debate uh, quite uh, quite early into next year. Um, so it's not something that I, I anticipate that it's going to trigger a crisis, but, but I think we've had two warning signs and it would be silly of us not to listen to them. Uh, we've seen last year the 10-year go to 5%, and, and clearly because of supply, because of too much issuance by the Treasury. And we saw how sensitive that was after the, the Treasury sort of changed the auction um, the auction schedule and, and that sort of the amounts being issued. It was a pretty big warning sign. The markets are paying attention to yields at this point. And we're now 4.2, 4.3. It's very different. But, but the sensitivity is there. And we're issuing about 1.6, 1.8 trillion a year. We need buyers for this. And we need buyers when the Japanese are not buying, when yield curve control has ended in Japan, when the Fed is selling, not buying. This is going to be a lot tougher in the years ahead. And it's also going to take place against the backdrop of a big capex cycle that is going to increase demand for capital. You guys talk about AI all the time. It's not just AI. It's it's sustainability, it's rebuilding supply chains in ways that are more resilient. There's a lot of demand for capital. The, the world of sort of excess liquidity, very low rates, it's essentially over, uh, at least for the next decade or so. And, and that kind of headwind is going to place a much bigger demand, I think, on, on the U.S. Uh, fiscal authority to be much more responsible than it has been. So I think markets are starting to pay attention. There's no question. I'm sure a lot of people are, but obviously not in Washington. Professor Gomez, it's Karen, um, fellow Quaker here, also with Dan. So is there, is there a number, is there a percent for the tenure, let's say, where you're like, you know what, that's it. The market will look at that as the, ringing the bell. This is a problem now, not sometime in the future. I, I don't have a number. I, I think that's, that's I, I do think we just came up with a study, our, our sort of Wharton budget model came up with a study of how, how many years it will take until, I'm not worried about the level of the debt right now. Let's be clear. We, we can afford this level of debt. We can grow out of it. What I'm really worried about is it's going to double a share of GDP in 20 years. That I can't see us as being able to afford. And I think that scenario actually, which is sort of the CBO scenario, it is optimistic. Um, that I think is a problem, is a serious problem. Um, do I, I don't have a number in mind for the 10 year, but I don't think 200% of GDP is, is we're not going to get there. I think the market will certainly <laughs> revolve, so to speak, uh, before we get that far. Professor Gomez, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. Uh, how much Thank of you. your analysis also tries to factor in, uh, you know, global goodwill for the U.S. Uh, and, and again, some of the political Absolutely. circus, some of the dynamics around the deficit. Um, I think this is the reason why gold is going higher. I'm just curious your thoughts on kind of the U.S. discount rate. I think that's that's absolutely true, and and, and I think that that is you know to some to a large extent where where and you guys just talked about it earlier. We're sort of. Uh, using some of that goodwill in different ways and, and eroding it. And, and we're going to rely a lot less on, be able to rely a lot less on it than we have the last 10, 15 years, I think. You know, just thinking China's been a, a good partner in many ways in terms of, for, for a number of years, in terms of sort of subsidizing our current account deficits and, and our endless borrowing and low savings. That's kind of ending. India is the, is the growing country the next decade. That's not a high savings country. That's much more of a high capex kind of economy that it's going to be a different world and we're not going to have the ability to rely on countries like China, Japan, maybe Saudi Arabia uh, to to buy some of our some of our debt. And it's one point eight trillion, one point six trillion, one point eight two trillion every single year. Um, I mean, you just think through that and it's it's really hard to see uh, at some point um, markets will break.